Good. Good evening, welcome to the Dan Glen Area School District meeting for uh, October 9th. Oh, sorry, October 8th. Give me this. Who's, who's the day for you there? You can all rise and please pledge the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Wolf, if you could uh, have roll call, please. Ms. Sorath. Ms. Aubrey? Here. Mr. Miller? Here. Mr. Gersa? Here. Mr. Strobel? Mr. B. Scott? Here. Mr. Wolf? Here. Mr. J. Scott? Here. Ms. Olson? Here. Mr. Sorath. Here. Uh, we will start with um, our special voting meeting agenda. Um, are there any agenda edits for our special voting meeting? Hearing none, uh, procedures for public participation are located on the inside cover. Um, under um, any presentations by public on the proposed agenda items? Hearing none, we have uh, item seven. I make a motion for item seven and eight. All right. Uh, seven and eight. There's our second. Second. Motion by Mr. Dresser, second by Mr. B. Scott. Uh, any board comments, questions? Roll call, Mr. Wolf. Consent agenda. Uh, consent, consent agenda items seven and eight will be adopted if there's no objection. If there being no objection, the items are adopted. There you go. Uh, any presentation by the public on any issues at this time? There are none. Adjourn from the voting meeting. Wolf, if you can have roll call again, please. Yes, Mr. Rapkin. Mr. Solberg? Here. Mr. Miller? Here. Mr. Gersa? Here. Mr. Strobel? Mr. B. Scott? Here. Mr. Wolf here. Mr. J. Scott? Here. Ms. Olson? Here. Mr. Rapkin? Here. Uh, public participation procedures are again listed. Uh, we did have a uh, executive session before uh, our meeting to discuss personnel items, and we will also be having an executive session after our board meeting uh, to discuss uh, personnel negotiation items. Uh, all right. Can I get an agenda? You sure can. I'd like to see the, uh, a recap of the extra committee meeting that we had last week. Okay. Extra curriculum. So we'll uh, add that under, uh, I guess, before all business. So we'll kind of make that item 16 and move all business down to 18. Um, so I guess the question is we have, um, we have Mr. Thompson listed at under old business. Do we want to actually have him go first, Mr. Thompson? Is that what's the board's uh, pleasure in that? Yes. So that way we can get you on, on the way, Mr. Uh, Thompson. So, uh, do you have a you, you don't have a PowerPoint, do you? Appreciate that. Okay. Uh, so do you want to come on up? Did everybody get, uh, I assume everybody got the emails from Mr. Small with uh, Mr. Thomas' presentations and whatnot, so, yes.
Down is on. It is down. <laughs> unless, uh, unless Mr. Matt wants to turn up the gain on that. Whatever. What number is it? What number is it? I see a serial number, but I don't think that's what you want, is it?
comments from Carney Engineering Group is our structural engineer and uh, this board has met uh, Josh Carney in the past and he'll uh, be reviewing our work as we proceed. Can I, can I ask a question Please. about the, can you elaborate a little bit on the 37,000 an hour? Like 37 uh, is hourly not to exceed 37. Right. Like that's the all-in cost per hour of, of work on that for that job. That's all, yeah, that's that's everything. That's preparation of the base drawings. That's the design development. It's the meetings. It's the construction documents. It is uh, bidding. If you look on the third sheet, it includes the there's a sort of a bulleted summary during. How much of that is the actual work? All work. I mean, like the, the, the physical work on the building. None of it. None of it. That's the design. So what's the so what's the total cost? At the thirty-seven thousand is the. That's the design work. That's the total for the design work, right? Okay. I, I, the, the hourly confused me. Yeah. Well, I mean, ordinarily, and if you would prefer, I'd be happy to do this as a stipulated sum is it happens that in our master services agreement there's a the board expressed a preference for hourly not to exceed and then when the solicitor uh, writes our service orders then the service order reads that way based on the product that Mr. Super gives us anyway is whether even if even if we agree to a stipulated some fee is he generally writes them based on the master agreement hourly not to exceed 37,000. Now, just to follow up on Mr. Scott's question, so that that number is for the entire project, not, that does not just this first phase? That is the entire first phase. So there will be additional costs for the other phases. phases. This will get you through the construction next summer. Okay, so it's not the entire, entire project, it's just this one phase of summer. It's not, I'm not assuming that you're going to do any other phases. It's, we'll cross that bridge. If you have other work that you want done to the building, I'm hoping to get, if you, if you go to the, the uh, three phases that we described on June 18th, what I'm hoping to do here, and we'll see if this uh, meshes with uh, what the administration and Mr. Strobel uh, will uh, agree with is to uh, commit all of the phase one work to documents and break out enough pieces of that because I think based on our estimate that should be about nine hundred thousand dollars worth of work but I think that the work that's here is uh, going to come in less than that because of the timing of when we're bidding it we're not in a rush we're here early in the season and we'll break out pieces of this so that uh, we'll have enough alternates on the project that we'll be able to pick from among that work on bid day and uh, get as much or as little as the board wants. I mean, I gotta say the 37,000 for chase uh, at least in the line of work that I do, seems absolutely ridiculous, but um, I guess we're here. But well, I, want to, I want to know that that's a ridiculous number. Well, it's, I know less, it's, it's less than 6% of the construction. But costs. it's a ridiculous number. Well, what, what, what do you anticipate on soft costs? What are your anticipated soft costs? Well, the soft costs include uh, the contingency, and I don't... You and know, what's, what's, what's the percentage on the contingency? What do you normally estimate? 20%. 20%, that's got to come down. There's no way there's 20% contingency. No, not the contingency, the soft cost, 20%. Okay, and how much is that contingency? The contingency would generally be 5% on design and 5% on construction. So there's 10 of it. I thought municipal work was crazy, it's ridiculous. Um, I guess we really have no idea yet of what phase one is, what particular part of the building. What, what is shown is phase one on right. the June 18th. Okay, 
So that's what we're going with. That's, that's what I would start okay. with. And if the, if the administration and Mr. Strobel have other things that they want to do, take things away from this, add other things, I'm, okay. I'm very open to that. Okay. I believe Mr. Strobel asked for some details for sealing up the building. And did you provide that to her? Is that just the that's, that's the design work. That's design development. Well, I thought he wanted the cost for actually doing the work. We provided costs for the pieces of this as part of the June 18th for the piece by piece. From where you want to use. I don't think that's what he was expecting. I think he was expecting detailed estimates. At design development, we'll do that. Is it is the so it's thirty seven thousand per phase, and is that is that no no it's just thirty seven thousand for this first phase. That includes the base drawings. The base drawings will be useful if you do other phases. If you do additional work on either the masonry or other work on the building, you uh, might do mechanical work down the road. You could use those same base drawings to do other projects architectural projects in the building. So all those all those prep costs are built into the 2.4 million for all three phases? The base drawings are. Okay, so anything and else? You'll have a lot of typical details that can be reused. So we'll revisit this. If you have other masonry work that you want to do, we'll, we'll revisit this as we go along. So I did notice that you had um, uh, Whitmer on there as uh, so they, they would, they actually would not be bidding on the project? They could. Okay, so that's, so I'll, 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 so they're helping you with the pricing on this, but they're gonna be bidding? They don't, I don't price, I estimate. Okay. So when they prepare bids, if they prepare bids, is they'll be competing with everybody else. But you're gonna use so them this as a isn't a, This isn't a cost proposal right. from Whitmer. I guess I, I was confused as to why they were be uh, to Mr. Dresser's point, why they're being utilized as a consultant if they're going to be a bidder. Well, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, I don't, I don't know. Is that I have seems kind of odd? Other, but I, don't know. I have lots of other estimators that I could use. We have other estimators that we could use that would be different than Whitmer, and then uh, that would be a uh, double check against. If Whitmer did the Whitmer did the testing, right? that resulted in the documents on June 18th, I'll be happy to find a, another independent estimator for this project, as Whitmer won't mind. And the, the, did the costs include any um, uh, on-site inspections by you or another um, individual? Yeah, I'll do the, uh, and that's listed on the, under, construction phase services. So on the third page, the scope of services includes preparation of the uh, construction documents to be submitted to the borough for approval. So we'll need a building permit. Uh, the documents will be submitted for permit application, with a permit application, and then any final edits incorporated into the bidding set. So the bidding set, then we'll do a pre-bid meeting. We advertise the bids and uh, do a pre-bid meeting with any contractors interested. Then we write addenda to any, uh, any changes to the bidding documents based on feedback we get from the contractors. And uh, then once the bids are open, we'll tabulate that and present back to the board. Then we issue, the next steps are we issue a notice of intent to award to the contractor for the uh, lowest responsible bidder and uh, plus any alternates selected by the board and prepare owner contractor agreements in conjunction with uh, district solicitor. Then during the construction phase we do uh, issue the contractor notice to proceed with the executed contracts. We hold a pre-construction meeting but then we do bi-weekly job conferences with the, with the contractor as the project proceeds and that's for the duration uh, of the project, if there are any contract changes, we document that as we go along. And then we do a substantial completion inspection and certification, and a final completion inspection and certification. So then it's really, from now until the finish of the project, that's all we can, that's the design. 
So, just so I understand, when the bids come in, you're, you would actually do the scope evaluation and make sure yeah. that they have they have excluded somebody. That's correct. Right. Okay. And we also, uh, because it's competitive public bidding, is we generally will require the contractors to submit contractor qualifications. So we will uh, be reviewing the submissions from the contractors to verify that they are qualified to do the kind of work that we're looking for. And then you, if they had any RFIs, they all come to you for it? Yes. Yeah. That's correct. So we take care of that. Just one more question. Um, I know the numbers have been thrown out, which is always a bad thing. Um, but when you put out your your bid, we're not we're not giving any numbers to these contractors when they ask questions, right? We're going to let them calculate the numbers on their own. Yeah, they'll have to bid based on you know. We're going to proceed. We there's not enough budget in this phase to work to do all of the masonry that was shown on the 18th. So we're going to have to use our best judgment as to how we keep it contained so that we can actually proceed with uh, a portion of that masonry work this summer. So we're going to do that in the background, and um, it's up to the bidders to identify um, internally. And, you know, we generally will uh, request the bidders to submit a non-collusion affidavit so that they're not kibitzing amongst themselves on pricing anyone. Anyway. So just based on the the, the uh, documents, is it a fair assessment to say at 300 a year, we're looking at three years just to complete phase one, assuming the cost well, estimates are? I think you can get through, I think you can get through most of phase one. Um, I think that the cost estimates are a little high. I think well, that a little high, that would be the third high. Okay. Think I, the, I think within, I, I think within three bidding cycles so we can do this. We can do all of it. And I'm not sure we're going to learn from the first phase how necessary the other phases are. So we want to make sure that we can adjust the scope of what we're doing based on what we find in the first phase. And is it, is it also true that once we start, like we have to continue? No, we could, if we, if we get into the work and we find that we're uh, have more work in than we think is necessary is we can negotiate get back change orders. If we get in the middle of the summer and we look at the work and say, I'm not sure that this all of this was really necessary. And we'll, we the more we open up on the walls. The well, no, I get I get the I get the the extent of work may change. Right? Once you start, I'm saying once we start, we need to keep. We, in other words. We're not going to get in there and then stop. Like that's not going to happen. Now, we, we know speaking, enough to say that, that we're yeah. not going to stop. When we get when we do a publicly bid project, is you want to begin it, and do the work, and complete it, and then reflect on how we did on the first one. Yeah. Like, so I guess that leads me to the question of what what would be the time elapsed that we have to stay with it to, to, to do all the work. In other words, once be, we start be during the summer. We have to have it done, all of it done. They'll, they'll get it done during the summer. It won't take them more than between. Well, but the June budgetary and constraints would keep us from getting. If we don't have 2.4 million set aside right. to get it done by summer. Right, but you will get so the first phase done this summer. But the first phase is the ceiling is our building this summer. Well, that's my concern. Is that the ideal was to do this first phase and see how the building reacts. See, you know, see if uh, we're able to keep the water out, which is the ink water ingress. That was the really issue. Yeah, so I think we're going to see trouble. It's not going to be sealed, so we're not going to keep the water out. So he wanted to see like, phase one and did that. Yeah, the phase one is targeted to a specific part of the building. So it, all we're going to learn is whether or not that work stops the problem in those sections of the first phase of work in those sections of the building. Right. right. And that's to say they do. But right. You, that's great, except we don't have 2.4 million or whatever, or 2 million or whatever it's going to cost to finish the other phases, and then we're two to three years in, and so to me the price goes up each year and the damage continues over those years. Yeah, good. But we're picking the the areas of the building that have the most uh, evidence of damage, so we're getting the worst of the 
exposure of the building. So if water gets into the building through cracks, we can see where the cracks are. Yeah. We know that the, there are some cracks everywhere on the building, but we're picking the worst places. So we're trying to prioritize to keep as much water out of the building as possible within our budget constraints. So then the, the work we're doing on, in phase one isn't the complete work of phase one? It's just that we're just sealing or we're just basically patching the, 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 that part of the building? Or, or, or does that phase one, the completion of phase one means that section of the building is as good as it's going to be right now? Correct. We will get My goal is to complete whole areas of the building. I don't want to do some of all of it this year and some of all of it next year and some of all of it the next year. Right. I want to complete whole areas of the building and see the, the quality of uh, deterioration in the building at each phase. Right. So, do you get what I'm asking? Like, right. we're, if you had $2.4 million, we could proceed with the whole thing, try to get yeah, the whole yeah, thing yeah. to come in low. That is not the reality. But regardless of what we pay, we, we complete phase one. Phase one is done. We don't need to come back and, and do, there's not more work. That's In other words, we're not just patching that section of the building, we're doing all the required work. Everything that was identified. Yeah, there, those bump outs, you know, over top of the classroom, yeah. that, that was right. covering those holes, I mean, that's going to be resolved. Yes. For a lot I of want problems. to resolve whole areas for exactly the reason. The same, that, say. That, that section's done, it's done, we're not going to be revisiting that in two years. To, right, yeah. and you know, the, I, I don't know what you're doing with the building, really, I don't. So at the end of next summer, the, you might have a tenant in the building, and the tenant might agree to pick up the costs of any uh, renovation projects going forward. So that's a common strategy. <laughs> and if, if that happens, that's right. then that's someone else's expense. So I don't want to assume that your lease arrangement will not, if you have one, will not include that. I think we, we, we would assume that it would. All right. <laughs> not realistic. Now, Mr. Thompson, um, you know, we would. Initially, we were looking to try to get this awarded by springtime yeah. to get to get yeah. the job. So, take me back from when we need to give you this direction right now. This is not this month. month. Yeah, what we asked for is we asked for this month that I would make a design development presentation <coughs> in December. Now, that might not match with your board meeting schedule, but my goal here is to have the project out to bid in March. So I would ask for design development approval, and then we'll prepare the construction documents and submit for uh, permit approval. And then take any feedback we get on the permit approval drawings and uh, incorporate them in the bidding set so that when we come back, the project, you'll know what the competitive bids are in a March time frame so that there's plenty of time for the uh, Masons to get organized in April and begin in May. That's my goal. Thank you. And if we have approval in October, we can achieve that. So just to follow up on the question that, that when we put this out for bid, the bidders are not going to have this information in front of them, right? They're just going to see the bottom. The, the, everybody has the information that you have in front of you. Because anybody who's The estimated cost? Sure. Anybody so who saw give them a, the June 18th, right, but if the estimates because they're probably it's below that. I'm sure they are. So we make a motion to bring it down, bring that number down. Well, you're not going to get a real estimate. I, you're going to get a look. I know who's gonna, never put these numbers out, and it shouldn't have been put out. They're going to call in. The bid specs are going to go out. They're going to be calling him in or emailing him, asking all kinds of questions about numbers. They can be very coy about numbers and let these contractors figure out. We stopped giving out numbers a long time ago and our bids came down considerably. These contractors aren't stupid. They do this for a living. Who's ever gonna bid on this project knew exactly what they were gonna bid on this project. So future efforts is for phase two and whatever. We just need to stop talking numbers because- Well, the, if the numbers don't add up, we're not necessarily locked into moving forward with anything either. Numbers amongst us is good, but yeah. publicly, Considering, you know, no, I mean, that's, about that. I mean, that comment was for public consumption. Right. I'm, I'm just saying, if I'm, and that's if I'm, not your fault. They're not going to bid it. They're not going to bid it, honestly. They're going to bid it 
according to. They're going to come in and if you say five hundred thousand, we're going to come in and four seventy to four ninety, and they they're going to make us feel good like we saved a few thousand dollars because they did hit on max. If you don't give that number, that number drops down probably another sometimes fifteen to twenty percent. So I guess we need a, a motion for our uh, voting meeting at the end of the month for Mr. Subers and how to move forward. Are there any other questions for uh, Mr. Thompson while here? Any other points you feel you need to make, Mr. Thompson? Pardon me? Are there any other points you feel you need to make? No, I think that you have uh, everything that's here. I think this was, uh, I try to keep it short and sweet and uh, very sensitive to your, I think your comments well taken is, uh, as we tighten up on our scoping and get the documents together is uh, we'll be discussing with the administration and uh, board member Strobel in the background what is the scope for the phased work, but uh, we will not release the uh, any alternates. We won't be identifying base bid versus alternates. I think, generally speaking, the bidders will know that we need to stay below a certain number, but it will be completely unclear what proportion of the work is in base bids versus alternates. I mean, I guess the, the, the thing is, is that the, the, the bids aren't going to be substantially lower than what you presented and, until we get into the buildings to determine that there's less work required. Right? So to, 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 to say that these estimates are high... ...based on what the information that's available because the photos, things like the photos that accompany that report, will incorporate the report without the numbers. We'll incorporate the report that shows what's inside the wall. So you have, this is to the benefit of the school district, is the bidders will have uh, as much information as Whitmer gave us, as we'll bind into the bidding so that in my opinion, the uh, what Masons do is they look at it like, well, what's what's the worst case scenario here? So they would bid the project based on well, what could possibly go wrong, and the more information you give them, then the more realistic their numbers are. So they don't have to put factors of safety on their bid. Another thing maybe we watch is uh, I know they all love their construction trailers. There is a facility there that has classrooms. At. Yeah, we're not going to. We're going to. We're going to use the uh, building as the uh, construction office and the toilets and what have you. Because they love their trailers. Now, Good. the the investigation uh, that Whitmer already did the, the report is that will that be shared with all the prospective bidders? Yes. To, to facilitate that. Yeah, without costs. We won't give the cost. No, I just so like ah, in, in, you know to uh, to back up what you're saying that they're gonna, maybe there's a lot of answers in there. Yeah, we don't want them to go out there and uh, you know look at the building and try and try and surmise what's behind the walls. We know what's behind the walls. We're right. getting the pictures because that's money we well spent. So, so that's the would be best to give it to them. So those money spent, right? That's for sure. And if Whitmer like, wins, you will have a different estimator. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to use a different estimator. I'll find a different cost estimator. When we present our costs at design development, it'll be a different professional estimator that way. All right. Great. Thank you, sir. Thanks for inviting me this evening. Thank you. Have a safe trip home. Um, if I can indulge the board again, um, I, our gentlemen from the church are here as well, and maybe to preclude them from uh, having to hang out uh, longer than necessary. Uh, maybe we could move that as well from old business up to uh, uh, present. Is there any uh, objections to that? Okay. Um, move the students up after that. Sure. We'll get them up early too. We don't have to pay up. Cool. Okay. Student report. Well, I mean, there's, really, there's no official student report. I mean, today. Okay. They're not obviously here if they have any any questions of okay. that from the uh, current stuff. But, uh, okay. Yeah, they, they want to stay here the whole meeting. Yeah. Not, uh, that's what they're here for. Yeah. Um, Elections have consequences. Yeah. <laughs> 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 All right, then. <laughs> um, 
I get maybe the best way to approach this, unless anybody disagrees, is maybe go over uh, the information Kathleen sent out. Does that make sense from a starting point, I guess? Um, she had sent out that uh, cost, cost sheet and uh, I actually had some questions on that. Um, so, I mean, so, I mean, we have, we have, we have costs for the building being open, closed, and in addition for the church. So, if I'm looking at, at, the, at the closed costs, why do we still have a, a disposal service if the building is closed? What are we throwing out? We put a budget in there. We put a budget in there because we might be disposing of some of the stuff that was in the building. So we're still cleaning out. Okay. Um, next question would be grounds. So the open cost for that is seventy-four thousand, and that would go down to twenty-five. I mean, is that? Is that, uh, will Mr. Durso be giving us notice, uh, notices that we're not in compliance with the township uh, height rule on, on grass? I mean, are, are we still maintaining the, the property as, as it needs to be maintained? Yes, that, that number was given to me by Casey. He said that's the number it would take to do the bare minimum to get it done and keep it in compliance. So right. I think we're over. I got to ask what we're spending. <laughs> 50, well, we were spending an extra fifty fifty thousand dollars on that. If, uh, um, okay. Um, and then the re repair and maintenance number for that ninety five thousand dollars closed. What what was, what does that encompass? The repair and maintenance number. He put a lot of money in there while the building was closed. He was expecting to do a lot more repairs to the building. Right. So we left that number in there. I just put more of a less with the church, just kind of like a more of a wear and tear yeah. number. I didn't put that number in there in the budget for 1819 that we okay. discussed was just because he was going to do other maintenance while the building was closed that he wouldn't have been able to perform. I think the boilers and the HVAC, there's something. He was going to uh, put in a uh uh, like a dehumidifying system yes to keep the keep the upper floors and stuff dry and ventilated mm -hmm. and that was a, well, that was at least one thing there was a number of projects he had with the building being closed it was more to stabilize okay. it so then with, with the under the, the the line for the church costs uh, with, so they're using uh, so the square footage in the building is 119,317. They're using 15,840. Um, so we're at, as far as electric, natural gas, and water, you're estimating that they're going to use as much as the full building if we add the clothes plus the addition for church? No, what, how I estimated that was we have to turn the heat and air on for the whole building because it's not just a sectional heating system that we have in there. So the whole building has to be done, but for them, I charge them a percentage of the building that okay. they're using. Okay. So we will have to pay for the amount for the building too because of the way that the heating in the area is. But so there's, there's, there's I, I knew we had issues with it, but it was not a state of the order there, but it, it's strictly, you set the building for 70 degrees, it's 70 degrees in the, in the entire building? No, it's, it's uh, you have, you have uh, either it's in the heating cycle or it's an air conditioning cycle. It doesn't it doesn't have the ability to flip between them. Right, I know that. I'm saying it's what's one temperature for the entire building? As far as I know. That's as far as I know. That's what Casey told me. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, I guess. So so where where are we? So we get down to. Um, the break even of dollar ninety seven. Um, th th this is where I get a little little confused because we're adding what the building was just closed and the additional costs. So I'm not sure why that's a, a break even because we have the closed costs whether we is somebody in there or not, right? But I calculated it both times. Yeah, I'm not sure. 
until the break even with just the addition, the break even on both. So I'm going to. I see, I see the top line is then going on underneath it says break even total budget plus additional usage. Yeah, both ways. With just the additional usage, but also with it both. So you're saying we, we could just use the 0.54? Is that?
uh, was it a was it uh, a declining scale that we we would have to pay back renovation costs or is it? Yes. Yes, it would be based on that we would do it in a calculation. That's a prorated That's amount. That's what we're talking about. Yeah, yeah. About just on the amounts of, of leasehold improvements, not on the amount of any credit that we purchased for, right. for this yeah. And I know we also looked like we had resolved any issues with uh, our local sports uh, clubs and whatnot, I, I believe. Is that, is that correct? Yes, as far as I know, at this moment, we're going to actually, the, the, in the facilities, we will co the $2,000 it'll cost to fix the room in this building, and they agree that they'll use the middle school, this building, and intermediate center, I'm going to call it AEC, but intermediate center. So the, they're using it because um, uh, Celtic Arts is here, what, three days a week? Something like that. So they've been using it yes. like two days? There. Outside of that. And I, I assume someone here from the administration is here about a minute, or they, will they get a key card? Chip card? Okay. I thought it'd be a Mr. Small about it. Uh, all right. I think it's fair if they're just in their own renovation. I don't know if you just realize that it works. I would hope we would work something out with the person. If they're in there, they're saving us another $13,000 vandalism bill. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. If they never got vandalized before, did they? Like that. Just, I the, I, just the outside. Yeah. It's not that I'm talking about inside where they have a lot of damage. And it's, again, just to clarify, it's our assumption that even if we're paying just for two days a week, that no one else would be in the building in that, that section. That would be exclusively for our use. And um, there was also another, um, we discussed just the ability that we could put some signage up as well. And I don't know if you guys have any opposition to that. Right, clear. Yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, I, don't, I don't think there's an issue with that. I mean, uh, 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 as long as you guess it's, uh, nothing that's like too permanent that we had to, you know. Well, we'd be responsible for removing any signage that, you know, we put up, obviously. But. Yeah, the one, you know, your comments and not having anyone in that space, you just you just heard that we're Bes going through a renovation. Yeah, besides, so what I mean is besides this, you know, staff of any maintenance, you know, obviously your people have to be in there just talking about leasing it to anybody else. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. Yeah. Your area. Yeah. Exactly. Were, were we, uh, did we have a conversation with Casey about maybe uh, putting up some kind of uh, like partition or do we, we have that discussion? Okay. We haven't had that discussion. I had a discussion with him just to block the right side. He said just make sure there's a door and a partition between the two areas yeah. from the fire hazard, yeah. that perspective or a push or something like that. So he was already aware of that. I had a discussion with him last week. Okay. Um, any other board questions while we have the gentleman here? Any other, any other comments that you want to make? Um, yeah, the, uh, the only other comment that I would have is just that um, I know that you guys aren't voting on this tonight, but um, we, would, uh, we haven't voted on it yet as a church either, so we probably vote on it once we see a lease in here. We probably have a vote ourselves the night before you guys vote to make sure that that's something we want to do so we don't take up your time in case we have a church okay. vote. So well, uh, I, I, I think we... We would def we'll definitely have it on our voting agenda, so uh, we'll get any any other lease issues nailed down within the next week or so, and, and you guys can vote on it. And then we'll, uh, yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And that's the uh, meeting at the end of the month. The 19th. The 19th. Um, you know, before I forget, I know we. I know we uh, not on the agenda here, but since we were talking Burrsboro and vandalism, um, did, did we get, I mean, any other materials in there that should be like big things glue that we could be using elsewhere in the district? That's the one, that's the one thing I wanted to, to, to mention. Um, you know, I, I went, went in there after, obviously Mr. Hurley met me there, and I couldn't believe all the stuff that is still in there. I mean, we have computers that were just left up there to be damaged. And I can't believe there's nowhere else in the district that those computers could have been utilized and used. Uh, the library looks like I could go in tomorrow and check out a book if I wanted. Obviously, 
no one's there to do that, but we have library books in there. And there's a lot of supplies in that closet. Again, I would hope that some of that stuff that's not room is going to get over to the, the other elementary schools so that exactly my, my, my point. Yep. And a copy machine in the office that's just sitting there with no but in make copies. That's a fair question. And uh, right now, um, the stuff that was taken out of Burnsboro was the stuff that was immediately needed to be used to open the school year. Um, right now, literally today as we speak, um, phase two of getting stuff out of there is, is happening and stuff's being put in different rooms for auctioning, uh, possibly selling, and then stuff like leftover paper and things of that nature. Um, the computer equipment, and I'll certainly defer to Mr. Matz, um, is basically recyclable computer equipment uh, because of the age of the stuff itself. Um, but yeah, absolutely, right now we're in phase two of, of trying to get this stuff out. Why is there left over paper? We can't use a dumpster? Absolutely, we can't. And so okay. we, we distribute it to the different buildings as we speak. Probably a lot of colored paper. It actually is. <laughs> well, I, I think uh, every year I look at that, this, this is the supplies that we order, and I, I, I see a lot of colored stuff on there paper, pens, well, yeah, you know, all the stuff you sent home the Tuesday folder, maybe you get put on colored paper and send it home and wipe that stuff out. All righty, so that should take care of uh, there's a couple of old business items. Um, <coughs> moving on to uh, item six. Oh, I'm sorry, is actually any public comment on any of that old business? Not that the public is engaged in their PDAs and looking at their phones. Um, finance. We have some tax exonerations, portion of credit approvals, um, and uh, I believe this was added on. I can see uh, Mr. Scott, Jeff Scott's favorite topic, doors. Um, looks like a bargain. Because we're, we're, uh, we're reusing our lots, aren't we? So uh, 33850 for locks and hinges. Any uh, more discussion on any of those items? Public comment? That's good news for summer too. <laughs> Moving on to programs. Doors, locks, and clocks. Remember that. Uh, <laughs> let's see here. Uh, Rob, what, what's, what's item A again? What's item A under programs again? School. Uh, that's for uh, social emotional learning. Um, basically, uh, as part of our safe schools, we were trying to build positive school cultures. Um, and uh, originally, some of our professional staff, including administrators, have gone to training by Tom Stetter and Associates. Uh, now, what we're doing is we're bringing students in, and eventually, we're going to have PTC representatives uh, participating in the training. Okay. Uh, item B the uh, Spanish Club is going to discuss the or visit and discuss the Spanish history of Battery Park. If there is any, I'm not quite sure. Uh, that's in May. Uh, and then the, the Burst Food Bank, which has been in the past, will uh, be coming in to do their backpack program. Is that right? Okay. Yes, that's correct. Yeah, that's, that's been ongoing for several years, right? Yes, that's right. <clears throat> any board questions on items under programs? Under All the comment? Uh, Mr. Wolf, anything from the secretary's correspondence? No, Mr. Uh Under the IU, uh, last month was pretty standard approvals and fair. Um, I will say the, the one thing that um, we, we did have a discussion on, uh, which I, I will say is uh, unfortunate. Uh, Mr. Blessing is, uh, fortunately for him, he's putting in his retirement. He's the uh, uh, pretty much second in command over there, the chief financial officer. A uh, really good guy, been at the IU for a very long time. Uh, a lot of uh, experience that will be leaving. So uh, it'll be a transition over, over the course of the year. So it'll be with us until the, uh, the springtime. So they're putting it into motion now to look for his replacement. Uh, but definitely be big shoes to fill there. So uh, those uh, you know, you know, Mr. Blessing, uh, that would be the case. Um, any questions on IU uh, material? Uh, BCTC? Yes, Mr. Rapkip. Uh, we met uh, last month, and uh, really the, uh, the only item of uh, significant discussion was um, the continuation of, um, 
how we were going to move forward with building the uh, um, the welding training center, which will be built on the west campus uh, uh, behind the school. And um, we had moved the month prior to that to move forward only with the engineering and land development side. The board did move to continue the project with a construction manager that was awarded uh, working one or two days a week to oversee the trades and coordinate the uh, construction to make sure the building would be open on time. Um, so uh, that was really the only noteworthy uh, item we had. Okay. Any questions from Mr. Wolf, BCPC? Uh, now we'll get to our student board uh, representatives. I want to know who, who won, pink or, or purple? It was purple. It's purple. Yeah. I, I, I did see the promotional promotional video. Uh, I believe uh, Mr. McKnight, uh, we got to see that, Mr. Peterson. So we got glad to see the iPads are being utilized over at the, at the high school. Uh, and, uh, so, uh, you guys have anything else you want to share at the board? Okay. Uh, any questions for our student representatives while we're here? Uh, actually, I, I do have a. Uh, Mr. McLean, I have a question while the students are here. And when, I, when I left the Friday food truck, I, I, I saw Mr. Spores were over to break up the crowd, but I'm told students were in line till like 9 o'clock. I don't know. So I'm, I'm saying I heard some students were Mark Tardy because you know, they're still getting their cappuccino or whatever they were. No students were Mark Tardy. Uh, however, <laughs> um, there were some students who waited in line a long time, and I felt the only fair you don't want to ride in their hands. Well, it's just fair. You know, ride or not, want to make sure they have a chance to get their drink. So those students were out uh, beyond the time that they told All right, well, we'll, we'll, we'll allow it to uh, pass this time. I know, you're, I know you're working on getting uh, some adjustments for next time to make it even even bigger and better. Uh, but thank, thank you again. Uh, I think you guys have a, a good time there. Uh, I did not personally go to it, but if I can share a story with my friend uh, who went there. He was in line for, I believe, two hours it was, only for the person in front of him to order nine drinks, and then for the food cart to completely be sold out, and then he had to go back to class. So there, I would definitely say that there was some... Did, did he lodge your protest? Uh, <laughs> he was definitely uh, highly upset, is what I would describe his, his reaction as. Well, we're, we're working on that, make it stronger, bigger, better, faster. Uh, so. I left them went to Wawa. Left them went to Wawa. Okay. Extend it. Um, right. <laughs> but another thing that I think we need to work on is the teachers were quite unhappy with the amount of time that students were out of class to the point that if you had a test first period, those students that were out in line were almost punished for missing part of the time in the quiz and then were cut short. So I think that moving forward, um, the teachers didn't like the idea of being late and having that issue. So. That's definitely something. All right. Mr. McKnight, there you go. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Drosso, anything from the legislative report? Good. Good. All right. And I have one report to make. Uh, I went to the first um, earned income tax uh, meetings September 27th. Um, it's quarterly. It's pretty standard fare, um, except they're, they're moving forward with their um, uh, computer upgrade that they've been doing. It's ta it's on it's on schedule, um, but you know it's going to take a year and a half. Um, should make some impacts in their efficiencies and eventually mean that more money get back to the municipalities and the school districts. Super. Okay. Any questions for Mr. Olson? Okay. Move on to personnel items. Uh, you'll see a uh, slew of items under A, B, and C, uh, D, F, G, H, I, J. Um, we should have uh, the Act 93 uh, done tonight in executive, and we can get that on the voting agenda. Um, Mr. Scott, where are we with the confidential secretaries? Where are we? I mean, as far as the negotiations? Yes. Um, I spoke with Kathy on Friday. Okay. Um, we're, I'm waiting to get 
Act 93 and sports staff finalized, and then we'll, uh, we'll meet with them. Okay. And then we'll save the best for last, of course, and we'll uh, embark on our uh, negotiation with our, with our teachers. Outstanding. Feel another team building probably coming up soon. <laughs> Any public comment on any of these items? Any work questions? Uh, yeah, I have a question. Item J. Uh, J. Yes. Yes. It's a position description for athletic. Uh, yeah, I, I think I think you might need a flow chart. But go ahead. Yeah. yeah uh, secretary. Well, I, I have the position as described. I, I'm okay with it. I think I'd like to have some discussion with the extracurricular committee as far as real needs. It, maybe it's not more of an assistant director or other types of activities. I, I think it's worth some discussion. So is your is your question on the the job description for the athletic? Um, yeah, I don't get the description, but I, I assume the description is put there to fill it in person. Uh, well, yeah. So maybe Rob can add because you know, Kathy shuts in, in the role now as as a part time uh, secretary. Um, and get, get, yeah, I, I think I need a flow chart to follow the okay. logic here, so maybe Mr. Yeah. yeah, you might need a flow chart <laughs> for this one. Uh, really, there, there's a couple moving parts here. Uh, basically, this is uh, the proposal that's in front of you with the job descriptions is designed to increase productivity, um, in part, and a couple other loose ends that need to be tied up. Uh, one of the things that's happening right now is, uh, for example, uh, the Kathy Shutt is there part time in the morning, and then I have we have a district secretary going down to fill it in the afternoon. Uh, basically, we're losing because of the travel time. Uh, we're losing about a half hour or so of productivity. Not to mention the point that their their times don't overlap, and we can't get them to overlap. So uh, their their work is discoordinated. So uh, basically, it's a productivity issue from there. Uh, by reshuffling some job responsibilities, and we have the opportunity to do so um, as a result of uh, Rhonda's resignation, what we are going to do is we're going to move um, access to the uh, part-time position. We're going to move the other half of our job, which involves child accounting, um, over to district office over here to take up the other half of her day. Um, it also puts jobs like functions, child accounting, and central registration going together. Um, they, they're using basically the same software packages and they overlap a lot. So the skill set can be developed to expertise. Um, by moving access, the access, former access child accounting position down to part-time, what that does is that person is just doing access. Um, access, if funding ever drives up, that we would no longer need um, that position or be a decoupling of that position. So the, the end result, what you have here is access, the, currently we have child accounting access coupled in Shelley's office together. We would decouple them. Um, that would be a part-time position. We move that part-time position Okay, over to the athletic, the, the fill the afternoon work for the athletic director, um, and then child accounting would be moved over here to district office. So yes, you would need a flow chart, but the bottom line is um, it would increase productivity, it would get more out of people, and it would help them develop um, their skill sets in that particular software and expertise that they need to have. Um, we've, um, through this process, we've talked to multiple people, including the athletic departments, the special ed departments, um, and, and certainly the people who are currently uh, carrying child and county and central registration for us um, and, and kind of designing these three job descriptions. Um, you are correct, Mr. Miller, in regards to one of the issues we are having is, is in terms of the athletic department and the number of nights out and things like that. Uh, one of the things you'll notice in, in the job description that is there for the athletic secretary is uh, flexible hours, um, and, which is an important piece of that to at least temporarily put a Band-Aid on, on some of the issues um, that are around that, although that was not the entire reason why we did that. But this is listed as a full-time position for seven and a half hours per day? Yes, it's listed as a full-time position. And the, the, the other three and a half, the other part-time, was two part-time people basically covering this before is what was happening. Okay. And you know, we'll get into it when we start talking about the extracurricular or something. There seem to be a lot of needs for helping to, to build and remediate programs and something that uh, someone with some athletic background could assist with some program building. I don't see that. That's not, this is just the administrative secretary. Okay. Any other board questions? Public comment? Okay. 
Moving on to enrollment, those numbers are uh, sent out to you, I believe, uh, Friday. Um, any questions on enrollment? Any public comments? Uh, Mrs. Olson, you had a very brief CNI meeting, I believe. Well, it was brief, but it was action packed. Um, so uh, we met today at 6:45. Um, um, the most um, pressing, I guess, thing that we discussed um, is that we had a group of, uh, and Mr. Mr. McKnight can interject if I say anything wrong that he, he catches when I when I'm talking about this. Um, we had a group of kids that um, are ready to. They presented to have a club approved. Um, the, um, it's the cafe club. It's a cultural awareness for everyone. Um, they have the required uh, 30 signatures, um, and they have a um, teacher, um, Mrs. Godfrey, I believe, from the English department, who is um, going to be um, set um, their um, advisor. Um, their club um, will discuss issues of uh, uh, racism, multiculturalism, um, both discussions, having feet, having a space for um, open forum for um, problems, successes, solutions. Um, they are hoping to uh, have their first meeting on the the Tuesday after our next meeting. If we can, if we could have a vote for approval of the club in our next our next meeting, we could do that that Monday. Uh, Mr. McKnight made available to the board, he just sent it to us, the, the PowerPoint presentation that the, that the kids presented. They, um, they did a nice presentation that does more justice to what they want to do than, than my 20 seconds did. Um, so you can, um, you can have that to look over. If you have any questions for, for us now, I might be able to answer them. But um, if not, um, you might be able to look at that. Um, look at that um, presentation and if you have any questions before our next voting meeting. Well, I, I assume that, uh, Mr. Vinnett, does, it, does that fall into the volunteer? Oh, yes. Additional question. Yeah. What, um, wasn't there a similar type club form a year or two ago that I think yeah. you, you, were, you were running? So the Ferris Club is really a group of kids who were underrepresented um, in terms of nutrition student government and that group still operates. This group really has a more state mission around issues of race and, and gender. Uh, they collectively feel that they don't really have a voice and they also feel that there's um, issues that they want to address in, in, in the system and in, in the community in general. Okay, so that, that was emailed to the board members, that, that presentation that they gave to us was, was sent to you. Um, um, the, the, I know we, we had a smaller group here because Mr. Mr. Schroeder isn't here, but um, um, it is our recommendation at the CNI that um, we should um, we should vote on that to approve it next next week. Um, um, we had a discussion about induction for new teachers. This is the this is the induction um, program uh, binder for um, to look through. Um, Dr. Sincerpano is running it. They, uh, it's, a, it's, it's, it's got some looseness of agenda, but it's also it's, there's a lot of detail here as well. Um, and uh, their first um, all hands meeting for induction is October 24th. Um, so we discussed that. We had a conversation about the strategic plan. Um, strategic plan um, due to the fact that we. Um, uh, lost our su uh, superintendent this summer. Um, we got a year extension to submit our strategic plan, so it's due next November, November 2019. Um, it still needs, uh, when it's um, ready for review, it has to be put out to the public for review and given 30 days um, before we can send it to the state. Um, so, like the drop dead date of when we need to look at, have it ready to be reviewed is October, but um, Dr. Sincerino is hoping that we can get it done before the end of school year in 2019, um, June 2019. Um, curriculum cycle, we, we included a, an item of curriculum cycle because we needed to discuss, 
which um, Dr. Cincirpino and, Dr. and Mr. Hurley are having some discussions about whether our curriculum cycle needs to be um, altered um, and changed. Um, so she just, we just put this as a placeholder so we remember to keep that conversation top of, top of uh, mind, I guess, because um, we haven't discussed curriculum cycle too much in cur curriculum instruction in the last year. Um, academic plan, um, Dr. Cincerpino should have um, academic plan as discussed with um, the full board, um, but with the input from uh, uh, Vice President uh, Scott uh, last, last meeting. Um, we should have that ready, hopefully, by curriculum instruction in November. Um, I wanted to throw that back to you, uh, Mr. Atkin, whether we want that presentation to just be in curriculum instruction and invite any board members that want to see it. Um, have that presentation in the committee hall next month or to set up a time separate for that for a like a, a workshop to to have that meeting. Well um can you or maybe Dr. C can answer how long is this presentation going to be? We might not know until we're a little further along in the process. But she okay. she could do I mean she could do like a longer, a longer one for curriculum instruction, like closer to closer to 25 minutes for us, and then a shorter one for the board. Are, are we are we due for a? Are um, uh, our our, our, our scores? We we yeah. hope they will be yeah. out before the end of this month, but we are not sure. Okay, so I'm, that, I'm sorry, I left that part out. Uh, what are we, what are we taking? Maybe like a combined uh, presentation on, on those? With that that yeah. if they come out before the before. When we expect it to come out middle of, middle to you know third week of the month, if it comes out November first and then we have to give a presentation November sixth, probably not. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I I would think there's going to be uh, I think probably the majority of the board is going to be interested in. Uh, I agree. Um, and there is a there is a um, another uh, committee meeting that happens at the same time as curriculum instruction. Usually, that's why I'm asking. Yeah, so I, I would think we probably want to have it at. At a regular meeting, okay. Uh, whether that's committed at all, we're, we're I mean, but and, our, and our, our voting meetings tend to be shorter. Yeah. So maybe, maybe we. we Especially if we out. if we're not sure when those scores will be out. Yeah. Um, okay, so that's what we'll shoot for. I'll know. I'll know sometime is, soon. If that's just a quick question. question. Is, it, is the, the plan? Is the is this the the K to twelve that we're required to do every? The strategic event? plan. Yes. Yeah, that's the one that has to go to the PD. Yeah. And we got it, we got a every five years, is that correct? Every three years, I apologize. But we got an extension on this one. Okay. Because it was due next month. But we did, we're not handing it in. Um so there's the there's the there's a required like here's what we're here's what we do plan, right? For the PD. The the start the start draft was available, like the it was like it wasn't the it wasn't like the previous one, it was a it was a draft of um, like a good portion of it completed was um, released through the curriculum instruction committee um, and shared with the rest of the board. I want to say last April. So you you've seen it. So the last conversation we had was specific to just a general like what are we doing to address our. And that's the academic plan, not the strategic yeah, plan. Yeah. So do we have a detail in academic next month? Okay. Okay. That's, just, what we, that's what we were just discussing. I, right. I mean, that's I'm what just that, asking. I'm not. Yeah. So that I said the the, the the one that we had most discussion about last last meeting with you um, that will be something that is available to discuss um, next month. And um, as Mr. Rathia mentioned, it might make more sense to have it at the voting meeting because they tend to be shorter and I think he might be right about that. Um, I, have two more <laughs> um, I told you we talked about a lot. Um, so we have four classes that Mr. McKnight want, um, wants to talk about um, adding to the 
to the uh, class, the course schedule next month. We have one where the paperwork is completely filled out. That's entrepreneurship under the business um, pathway. Um, computer, AP computer programming is another. AP Cal BC is another. And, and that might be it, three. So um, um, the deadline to have all the paperwork in the him is the end of um, October um, to be presented to the board for approval no later than um, curriculum instruction, I guess. Um, no later than the board voting meeting in November. Um, and um, he's working with, um, he's, he's working on um, some goals and uh, guidelines for an internship and apprenticeship program for credit. A lot of our juniors and seniors, more seniors, um, leave um, halfway through the day to go work. And um, if they work at a, at, a, at a job where they could be learning um, valuable um, apprenticeship or interning, um, if, it, if the job is suitable to developing valuable business um, leadership skills, um, he, we might be able to work out a situation where they do a little bit extra with those students when they're at their job to get them either a half or a full credit toward graduation. I think that's it. So that, that doesn't include fry cook, right? Correct. Correct. So that, that, that was his example. example. <laughs> One quick question for you. I'm sorry, I missed last the meeting, but the thing that came up during our um, last uh, technology meeting as far as web material versus books. The only, the only thing we discussed, and you can go into more detail about that if you'd like, but um, um, when, when, we get, when you get to technology, um, the discussion, there, there shouldn't be any recommendation, I don't think, through CNI right now to update the policy for approving textbook materials. The, 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 um, so, something you know the the process the process by which we get approval for textbook materials and especially um, electronic materials. We wanted to be sure that um, the policy that we have for textbooks um, meshed with having electronic electronic process, um, options and also stuff that is included in the Apple suite. You know, um, and but um, we found out from you and from, from from Mr. Miller and from Mr. McKnight and from somebody else who mentioned it that that um, that the textbook um, the textbook policy is actually up for review, so it'll be it'll be discussed anyway it's in policy. Two. So we'll we'll just put that back in your court, Mr. Scott. It's number two in the first reading. Yeah. <laughs> But back when I was in high school, we back when they still 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 pump gas. We would say petroleum transfer technicians. I guess that that would qualify as a as one of those jobs. Not unless they're in New Jersey. Uh, any other questions for Mrs. Olson? Any public comments? Uh, did is there anything up facilities that we need to talk about? Yeah. Okay. Besides doors. All my, uh, besides doors. Sorry? Besides doors, no, and there's more than the little doors. little project around Bird's Breath. Okay. All right. Uh, we did have a uh, meeting on the uh, on September 24th. Uh, we have a few items to discuss. Um, top among them, the door replacements that you've seen on the agenda. Um, that's for the annex classroom, band room, and the F wing annex weight room, so forth. Um, and these are the doors that have the louver bottoms. So the idea is to replace them with a solid door so they can't be kicked in. So, um, solid perch. Whatever they're made out of, they're $33,000 worth of material. Um, the next item was stadium turf update um, and some limits on usage. Uh, as you know, the turf is uh, getting to towards the end of its life cycle. and. Uh, and uh, even though it's safe, perfectly safe uh, to play on, the fill, you know, because the grass is no longer standing up, it's starting to curl over, 
So the, the black fill that's in there is starting to be more prevalent. So it's, this tarp's gonna look less green. Um, and uh, there's uh, there was also some discussion on uh, when we rinse or replace it um, uh, to, do, to move some of the events. Was it the uh, long jump or the long jump and the other, uh, something else to the other side of the field away from the high jump? Yeah, the high jump will move to the other side yeah. away from the events. So, then, then that was the other piece. Uh, the starting line uh, has to has to be moved because it was designed wrong from the beginning. So uh, we can't have county track meets and those type of things here because the uh, timing system isn't right. I told him about it from day one. Um, the next thing was the walk-in freezer refrigerator monitoring. Um, we had an incident at AIC due to um, a loss of power. Um, the, the idea would be to purchase monitors that would tie into the train system. So it would be a trouble fault that would hop on their network and then Casey or someone else can actually get notified that uh, temperature range is out of specification. So uh, the chances of losing a whole freezer of food would be uh, reduced significantly with, uh, with an accurate monitoring system. So uh, the outage was caused by a mechanical, or you say it was a power power issue? Um, I thought it was just a power power outage. Well, if it's a power outage, we know the freezer's not working. So what's well, why do we need that? <laughs> I'm sorry. We if the power's out. We know that we know the freezer is not working. No, but if you if you know it's not working, um, the chances are having somebody dispatched over here to take the take the food out that is frozen and move it to a different. Don't we get a notification that the power's out in the building? Good yeah, it's question. Good, it's good to have too, even if it's not in a normal power outage. I don't sense. remember the situation, but the problem was they were without power and we lost the food. And so, what would we have done differently? Yeah, I if they we, got the notification on their phone that their uh, temperatures were not up to par, we could have uh, moved the food and taken it to a school that actually had a working freezer. This school's not open. Well, it was it was probably out over a weekend or a holiday, so who was going to come in and move the food? <laughs> hey, we could do nothing. Again. I, I mean, I'm, I'm just saying, if the power happened, are you putting it in your freezer? What freezer are you taking it to, Aaron? I, I, uh, I, I know Alonzo's here. Yeah, where are you taking? Come in, Aaron. You're free. Yeah, we, we do have generators. Yeah, we do. But they're probably not not tied into to that. that. Right. <laughs> so. What happened on this incident was the blades or the freezer part of it froze up and we believe it went out on like a Friday at four and there is no one in the buildings right. to monitor that situation. So we could have had someone there Friday fixing it instead of waiting until Monday and all got there at seven o'clock. So it wasn't a power energy, it was a, it was a mechanical issue. Uh, it was a mechanical, but over the course of the contract that we've been here, we've lost $5,000 worth of food that we've just taken a loss for and haven't passed on to the district. Because our first year we were here, we lost the high school downstairs freezer, which is our USDA freezer, and we had to throw all of that. Who, who's, um, who's contracted to come through and service the equipment on a regular basis? I have no idea. That would be a KC, GCA question. So, nobody? But uh, <laughs> it, fall yeah. Under, yeah, it falls under our maintenance set. Yeah, so if, if we have nobody coming through to inspect these pieces of machinery on, on a quarterly basis or whatever, we're going to have problems. Well, if you have a, if you have a failure, a compressor failure, you know, maybe that falls with or within or not within the cycle that you're checking it. So I, I, think I understand. Is, I think this is the this is the better way to go is actually monitoring the situation, uh, so somebody be at least made aware that there's uh, that the temperature. So is so well, who would be alerted? Casey. Casey at the minimum. I don't know who else. Would. Casey. Because he gets the he gets the alerts on his uh, when there's tr when the train is a trouble trouble alert, so he gets his notification. What, what's the what's the cost to do that? I don't know. With the train monitoring, so it's all part of their part of their system. He was going to come back and give us uh, um, a cost for what it would take to put the monitors on the freezer so they would be tied into the train network. He 
Could, could it, is, is, there, is there an app that, that the food service manager would also get the alert? Uh, good question. Well, they can set it up where as many people as you want can get the email alert. How much food have you lost? Over the course of the contract, about $5,000 worth. And how, how long, is, like what time period has that been in? Uh, four years. Four years? But I'll ask, that's a good question. I'll ask to see if, uh, if there can be subsequent notifications sent out to uh, representative or representatives from the yeah. nutrition group on that they can be notified. Yeah, he did indicate that that would be possible. Do you have a deal with anybody that comes through and just checks out the equipment on a, like, we my have no deal, that would be the district deal. You know. Right, so it, does the nutrition group have a service company that typically does the nutrition group have a, a company that you guys would use? Yeah. We can find a company, yes. We yeah. also Because I, 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 obviously I don't, I don't think we have that expertise on staff or as GCA. So I, I think we definitely want somebody doing routine maintenance on that equipment. Uh, so if you, if you could just maybe recommend somebody then. Okay, we can do that information. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I, I will say if we, do, if we do regular scheduled maintenance, whether it be annually, semi-annually or quarterly, you could still have something fail in that no, no question. time. So, um, no, no, no question. But I mean, if, if no one if no one's cleaning those those coils, agree. Um, and, and you know, uh, Mr. Scott, you know, Bucky works works uh, with a lot of food service equipment as well as that was my former life over 15 years ago. And if none of that stuff's being serviced, that compressor's working harder and harder and harder. And, and you know. well, it wasn't a question of cleaning. I think if I recall right. Other members of the committee. I, I thought there was a unrelated or unrelated to the power, there was a loss of refrigerant. So that's what froze well, the coils up. They had a leak in cooler. Yeah, and you know, and, and, and typically, typically, at least if you have somebody under contract, you know, they would come out on the weekend, whereas it's, sometimes it's hard to, if you don't have anybody, you know, to get somebody out, it's, you know, it, roughly. So on the Get into a contract with them. And it's, Actually, no Mr. Wolf, um, onboarding the um, temperature reading to have an alert. Did they have? Did we already have an estimate how much that would cost yeah, to uh, do? Yeah, Mr. It's Black something Black that we need to look. Okay. Yeah, he's got to get back to the search. All right, thank you. Um, all right. Next thing is the high school gym RTU replacements, compressor re replacements. Uh, several AC, uh, AC compressors have completely failed that cool the high school gym. Um, we're about half. Didn't we just replace last year? No. no. Um, and due to their size, a crane will be required to hoist them up onto the roof. So um, Mr. Blankenbuilder is uh, exploring costs because it's, it's, it may be cost effective to do the ones, obviously, that have failed, but also address the ones that haven't failed because they're all about the same age. Can, we just, we just, uh, can you borrow a crane from the construction site over at the power For the plant? doors. <laughs> Boy, for a district that closed our elementary school, you sure won't make a foot out of my favor. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I can call him anymore. Oh, wow. You didn't give me one when I asked. Oh. <laughs> don't think your mic working? Don't think he was going to re uh, relinquish the crane to us anyway. Anyway, um, numbering of the doors and, and all the build inside doors and all the buildings. Um, that would be to, you know, we have obviously right now, if you walk around the schools, all the exterior doors have numbers on them. So the idea would to have, make sure every door on the inside would also have a number on it. So that uh, that way, if there's an emergency personnel come through, they can reorient themselves and know what, what their actual classroom is. Because a lot of the classrooms do have the plaque hanging from the ceiling, but, you know, not all of them do. Uh, sorry? What? He said nothing. Okay. Uh, the, the other thing was the sidewalk repairs. Um, discussed the need for, to repair the sidewalks in the middle school, AIC, and Monocacy, um, which, in case you know, some of you may be aware, the board actually did approve at Monocacy to hire a company come in and pump the material underneath some of the slabs of the concrete yeah. because the slabs have, the curb is here and the slabs have sunken down, making a tripping point. You don't want the kids tripping to get into the bus, obviously. Uh, we did have a company come out um, what, last year, year before. They attempted to do something. I think they had equipment failures. 
whatever the reason was, they never came back. Casey said, well, I'm not paying for it. So, but that's still uh, an active project that we're working on. So he's going to get some of the numbers for uh, concrete work. Um, lastly, um, in April of this year, um, Mr. Blankenberg discussed the list of building needs, and among them was the need for a security system at Monocacy in the form of cameras. Um, Mr. Hurley is writing uh, an application for a safe school grant and would like the board commitment to spend that money if received for that purpose. So it was just so we agree with all of us that if we do get this money that we're going to dedicate it for that purpose and I think that's pretty easy amongst us to agree. Um, it, it would go on an agenda, but... Uh, do we have cameras at other schools? Have this, the, the smaller area to do, there are two safe school grants for each one, is that? There's two different grants that I've written. Um, one is for $25,000, one's for about $206,000. This is the smaller of the two grants. So do we ever upgrade the cameras at the high school? The ones that were, I remember we had a pretty significant number of them that were there, but either weren't functioning or you couldn't really see anything. I can tell you part part of the second grant that I wrote has some upgrades to the video camera system at the high school. This was one of the issues they weren't all connected, so you couldn't look at them from one location. Right, you had to be in each individual building, and that was one of the challenges we had was getting them all in one system so you could see it from one singular location. Mr. McKnight, correct me. Didn't we upgrade the head end system of the of the camera system? We have some upgrades. Um, there's still some areas that are not visible. There's still some cameras that are down. No, I mean, I meant uh, the, the head end where you actually go back and review to, to modern, that has been modernized as so the cameras out throughout the building have to be you know, also upgraded because some of our coax, I mean, they're, they're a mix of different media. I think you want to go to an IP format. Uh, Mr. Max likes that. Yeah, sure. So, I mean, we, we know that the smaller grant is pretty much guaranteed. Uh, it's large grants that, that are the ones that are up in, up in question. So you know, my question is, are the cameras at Monocacy our number one, our absolute number one priority? Because we know that money is guaranteed. So I just want to make sure that we're addressing, that $25,000 is addressing our... our is that enough? Concern. Is 25000 enough to do the whole school? I have to go by what Casey said, and it should be close, okay? Um, if not, they can scale the system down um, to, to meet the needs. But not can see currently does not have a video camera. It's the only building that doesn't have a video camera system. And that, that's our number one need right now in the district. We, we discussed it among our administrative team um, about what the needs were in, in our school district. Um, this was one of the top priorities that we did have. We did invest a significant sum of money in the high school, so we were, we were looking at this as being one of our major needs. We have lots of needs, we do, obviously, but the funding is not unlimited. But um, nonetheless, this is a priority need for us. And it's a grant, right? Yes, this is a grant. That concludes my report. Our next facilities meeting will be uh, October 22nd, year uh, 615. Any other questions for Mr. Wolf? No public it's, comment? It's, it's not a question for Mr. Wolf, but do we need to look into the cameras? I mean, is Casey looking at that? He has to wear a long Yeah, we... So he should bring it to us? Yeah, yeah. this has been going on for a while. We, oh, okay. It yeah. was just... Scott, Mr. Matt, have you, have you <coughs> kind of standardized on an IT format camera that you guys are kind of looking at? That's what we are working towards. Uh, from an IT perspective, we're looking at raw cameras, which tie into um, our existing network infrastructure as well. So you just let it like, go into the nearest gateway? Exactly. And, okay. Okay. Uh, I don't believe we have anything for finance, right? No, we did not have a finance meeting tonight. Our next meeting will be November 12th. Okay. Uh, Mr. Scott, policy review. Everybody's <coughs> been waiting for this. Um, there's a big number, as you can see, of uh, policies up for first reading, so uh, I would ask if you could take a look at those and let us know if you have any concerns. Um, it, yeah, the two that were under uh, had, had been revised, and we had a couple that were waiting for legal review, um, which I think we're only we're down to one that we're waiting for legal review. 
for Mr. Scott on policy. Public comments? Mr. Miller, technology. Uh, yes, we had a technology committee meeting on October the 2nd. Before we get started, I would like to ask if it starts to take orders. We, we don't seem to have a table order available on, on the off night. It's what we did on Tuesday. So I'd like to make an arrangement if I could pick that up, especially if we're going to be having the extracurricular committee meeting on Tuesdays as well. So where, where can I get the table? Everybody jump all at one time. We, we have them in our office. Shirley is actually the one that handles the tape, the reporters. Mm -hmm. They just meet it on those meeting nights. We can leave them with whoever it's going to be. Yeah. I don't know when you'll be here. We can what, what time, Shirley, what time do you usually typically leave during the regular school day? Four. Four. Uh, but I can leave it whatever yeah, you want to leave them. I know I already took two. Just leave here on first Tuesday? Usually they're left here on the table. Yeah. But well, they're not they're not there for transportation either. Yeah. Yeah. I tried to bring the one for transportation but couldn't find it. We've already talked about that. <laughs> we got it. It's we got fine. It. it just moved. It was transported. No. Totally fine. Okay. As far as uh, items that we uh, quick review, uh, we went over the uh, one on one rollout update. Uh, things still going very well. Only issues perhaps the network congestion some of the larger classrooms that it was a rural area where they had of 90 students so they got that in AP and uh, access there. And we had a demo from students, again, using the iPads. So there were some iPads that were used to put together some classwork and some presentations and went on very well. Did, did you get to see the, the PowerPuff video? I did not. Did you see the PowerPuff video? I no. Yes, yes, Mr. Peterson did share that with you. Yeah. Yeah. We're being very creative and like, I'm not sure we did. Uh, and I think I had to use that material already. Uh, got into the budget plan and uh, presented some infrastructure updates, but also looked at the um, document management system, planning a, to present it to do a pilot for document management coming uh, in the next year. Uh, also talked about the, the CIS, we've been looking at uh, the student information system replacement. Um, we had talked about uh, potential budgeting for a big ticket item. Sounds like uh, Skyward is having some issues in some of the other implementation areas. No, no, not for the financial system, but for the, the student information system. The, the people that are rolling it out, that, that there's some challenges and, and, and there's some reason to, to take a step back from looking to move forward for the, the I'm disappointed. I'm with Skyward. I'm disappointed. Yeah. That's not well my mind. Not with the software that we purchased, but the, yeah. Um, part of the selling feature of the deal. It does it all. It fixes itself. The integration. Is they're working right now? Oh, yeah. <laughs> of course it is. It works all night. Well, uh, I guess as far as the financial system upgrade, and uh, still on target for a December to We used to have the uh, beginning of the, the new calendar year. I guess, are we going to be able to use it for the budget cycle this year? Or? I have been working with a consultant to make sure that I'm able to take all the information from the and I should be able to dump it right in, directly yeah. how they do it. So I'm hoping to, starting in January, you'll see it, you'll see it after January 1, when we're starting. Okay. Before then, any presentations, we'll see what I see. But so, come January, February, we'll be able to, to drill into the cost elements and cost centers. Should we have any problem with that? Uh, see, the online payment system upgrade has been approved. It got through legal. Unfortunately, it was too late for the iPad insurance, but uh, it can be used moving forward for collecting other expenses. As mentioned earlier, we, we had a presentation of question of um, using materials for the iPads. Um, as, as teachers start to incorporate them into the curriculum, they're going to want to purchase um, materials to put on the iPads and want to see if that was going to be included in the budget or what the thoughts were for moving forward and getting items for the curriculum on iPads, I have a budget plan for that. Text policy committee. Well, yeah, I, well, I, I guess that ties into it. We definitely, I, I know when we first talked about moving to the iPads, that was a conversation. I, I think the, the sell was that there was so much free information that could be leveraged 
out there that it wasn't going to be a huge need for that. Okay. Now I, you know, for me, I, I felt like, okay, maybe from a, like a, an online textbook, but I got to believe there's apps and things of that nature that certain teachers are going to want to use that the kids are probably going to introduce to the teachers that they might think are helpful. I mean, that's the whole point of it, right? Is to make it more interactive. And so I would imagine that that cost is going to start to pop up, but I, I mean, yeah, you probably have to put some kind of limits on it. I don't know that we can really budget for something like that because I would imagine that a lot of it's just going to come ad hoc as you know the kids and the teachers are working together. I think we'll be there when they want to think of a number, but I guess even more important is the process of having teachers, you know, coordinate and you know, agree on what they're going well, to do. Well, they're going to share it with each other, right? Like one teacher's right. going to find an app and then, right, is that, how does that work? Like, if, you know, can we get the app for a school or does it have to be individual licenses and that kind of thing? Like, that's the part I don't get is, right, like you can, if, if, like, what if it's an app that we want all the kids to have? So Scott can load the app on all the iPads theoretically, right? What's the, you know, then there's those types of things you probably could get and budget because there's going to be some kind of licensing costs just like you would have in any other software on a device. So I don't know. I'm imagining there's going to be other like one-off type stuff that certain teachers are going to want to use. I think there will be. I guess do we want to standardize on software? And, you know, there are different options to do the same function. Do we want to? Together and I mean, it might have to be like a, a blended kind of conversation with I, with IT and with curriculum, right? Like, hey, what kind of apps do we want to load them to, and, and then also, you know, put some kind of number around yeah. cost. But well, I guess the process of somebody identifying an app that they bring forward it should be shared. Is it one off? Or something yeah, I put it in the policy. I would imagine the students are going to bring up apps that are valuable to use in the classroom. That's all I have. Any other questions for Mr. Miller? I guess as far as next the meeting, we're going to meet on the first Tuesday of the month, uh, November, the first Tuesday of the month is election day. We're going to push it to the second Tuesday of the 13th. I, I know we said, again, when we were rolling out iPads, that there was like a three year kind of approach to how embedded it would be in, in the curriculum. Like, do we have a, an update on that at all, like where we stand? Like, have we realized any costs? Have we eliminated any textbooks? Have we any of that kind of thing? Uh, I, I don't know if we had something that it's a social answer, but I, I thought we had pulled money out of the budget, but the, our 10 year old textbooks become 12 year old textbooks. Yeah, we, we've, we've been, well, we've, we been we've been deferring really. we've been deferring textbook costs. We we, yeah. we have we did not. Well, so we stopped buying them, but are we still using the old ones? Mm -hmm. yeah. Like that's what I'm getting. I guess it's like. Is it really benefit? Are we getting the benefit if we're just no. using the old textbooks that are outdated for three more years while we have the iPads? I think we need or are we subsidizing and moving to an online? I, I think what you're talking about um, is a process. I don't think yeah. we'll be ready to have that discussion of you know when we're you know seeing our um, what what curriculum can move to an electronic media that's included in the cost of the iPad rental or leasing, um, and what curriculum needs to be updated with new actual textbooks or new um, licenses for the textbook plus plus a, um, um, a digital version where we have to pay extra in addition to the iPad suite. Um, it's it's going to take more time than just you know this year to see that improvement. In, not not improvement to see more um, that blended, that that blended that study where we're fully integrating the iPads into into the classroom. It's happening. It's and for some teachers, it's happening really fast, and for others, maybe slower. Yeah, you know, it's. Um, no, I think we. I think we kind of knew that was going to be the case correct. when we started. I just again, like to me, that would be another aspect of. The plan. I'm just saying if you want to report on where we are with that, like right now. I'm just now, curious. Be very very I, I, think, I think we had originally talked about maybe having a, a, some updated report uh, after school was going for a few months to kind of see how things are moving as far as the curriculum. And I also think we probably need to, uh, I think we all knew that there would be 
more early uh, adopters and, and, and ones that would kind of just uh, putter along. So I, I hope we're, we can identify the teachers that maybe need a little extra help. Correct. Um, and, and get that support to, to those teachers as well so that they can. Yeah. Um, some of the teachers, I, I believe, at the, this, this two day in service, um, that's a lot of, that's some of what they did at the high school today was meeting with the technology coordinator and having um, some discussions about new ways to that that is I know we did a lot of that over the summer but that is that it has been built into some of our in services for the rest of the year so we should see more and more improvement there they also have time to um, talk to um, Mrs. Treehouse um, about um, things that if there is something that they want to incorporate now and they need just a little bit of help to, to get that developed, you know, they, they can do that um, during their planning time and stuff like that today. Good, Mr. Scott. Any other questions for Mr. Miller? Any public comments? May I actually say something? Absolutely. Uh, not related to what we were just talking about, Rob. But there was a, uh, an issue that I actually have noticed uh, students somewhat reporting about uh, the current restrictive um, system that we use for uh, internet browsing, the Lightspeed systems. Uh, I have noticed uh, in my own personal usage and uh, that students have actually been uh, talking to me about is that they have been finding it uh, restrictive on things that they would like to use for educational purposes. I had for, uh, recently I've noticed that even like Wikipedia have been blocked off and students have not been able to access it. That I am not sure if that's been updated, but last time that I have tried to access it personally, uh, it was uh, I was unable to access it, I believe, because at least the existence is classified as a forum site. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I know no uh, filter is perfect. Uh, I don't know if Mr. Mass if you can answer that, address that the question or not, but the uh, process. I mean, is that a matter of reporting it? Like if it's Students come up with certain sites they feel should be off the list. Can we address those? Yeah, typically our faculty members will submit things to us that will release. Um, just a matter of finding out that something's blocked. Uh, Mr. Rathgap's right. No filter is perfect, and we definitely do take a better safe than sorry uh, approach. So you probably will find some things blocked that are completely educational. We just need to go in and find those things that are allowed. But if they, if they come across ones that they feel shouldn't be so on the list. Sounds like they should bring it to the teacher and then yeah. they'll, the right. teacher will address it with the technology and stuff. Yep, correct. We always use a faculty member as a clearinghouse just to verify that it is a legitimate resource to use in the classroom. Uh, once we get that request, my nine percent of the time to unlock it. Do you have a way to report that for the teacher to <clears throat> just email you or how do we do that? That is a uh, category in our health test that they just spent with it. Okay, thank, thank you. I would just like to bring it up while we were on the topic. Yeah, okay. yeah absolutely. No, that's great. Good you should bring up any of those types of Mr. Mance is working on it now. <laughs> He's already got would be up. Yeah, it's going to be there in like a few minutes. Mrs. <laughs> yeah. uh, Albright, transportation. Transportation. Mm -hmm. um, we had our meeting on September 17th. We are supposed to have our meeting uh, next Monday the 15th and that is going to have to be changed due to the superintendent interviews. So I'm going to suggest that it be September 17th, Wednesday, which B. Scott loves because he doesn't come on Wednesdays. So, so anyway, six o'clock. Um, we discussed on September 17th um, the loading at Amity. Um, there had initially in the first few weeks of school been some issues with getting the buses loaded and out on time. Um, as far as I'm to understand, that has been resolved. Um, and then we had spent quite a bit of time discussing about um, reversing how they were working the busing and the parking, and they were gonna do something, and then the very next day they changed their mind and said, we'll talk about it next school year. So that's on the bus company. Um, they also said that the leaving times are not accurate when parents are calling in because they're basing it on what time they're dismissed from school and the dismissal time is 310 to leave school, but the buses aren't actually leaving the parking lot until 325. So there's an extra 15 minutes that parents are adding to when they talk about their children being on the bus. They actually are on the bus, but they're not moving or leaving school. 
Um, and then there's something I have notes about card readers for schools that need to be purchased, an SD card reader, and then I have Scott's name in parentheses. Did anyone contact you about SD card readers? Back in August, uh, there was a question about that. We ended up setting up a shared Google Drive to transfer uh, okay. video files from the buses. So I'm assuming it's stemming from that request, but yeah, that has been addressed. That's right? been addressed. Yeah. Well, okay. I, I thought they had an issue with they had, yes, that's exactly what it was. There was an issue with the uploading. They still wanted SD card readers. I think that should be resolved now with a digital transfer, but I can follow up with the uh, code just to confirm that there's okay. not two separate. It, it may be related to the size of the MP, the MP4 file. Yeah, that was one of the primary issues, so that's why we ended up setting up a shared drive because it would get caught in But as of the 17th, it still wasn't. Yeah, it, it sounded like there's still still an issue made when I touch base with them because yeah. yeah. they were looking to have a card reader at the school so they could just you know pull the pull the card out hand it to the school and it would be right there um, that was about it okay any other questions for uh, mrs Lawrence? public comments uh, back to you mr miller uh, we dusted off the extra curricular committee uh, yes, we did. We, we had an initial uh, planning meeting on uh, Tuesday, October the 2nd. It was uh, Mr. Strobel, Ms. Olson, and myself, for everyone's attendance. We had some open dialogue and, and planning and came up with a desired meeting schedule. Uh, we're, we're still going as we move forward. We're, we're thinking that it, it may be best to meet you know, every other month or quarterly to do some reporting on you know, progress and status. Uh, we'll look to develop a policy charter that talked about attendees. Um, in addition to the board, we would like to see the AD principals and then the scenes potentially. Uh, would be, uh, get to, uh, we, we would like to invite some meetings and looking to do some reporting to, to see where we are with our activities, with our athletics and activities. And you break I mean, really into in two separate things, one athletics and non-athletics as far as reporting, but I think it would be good to look at where we are with you know, participation rates, how we're faring based off you know, activity fees, Actually, the two remaining items from the last time, the group of men and activity fees and uh, fundraising schedule. See where we stand on those and, and to, to hit the item again. I was a little confused. I, I guess I uh, couldn't find the meeting notes, but the, the last recording that I had from the um, committee, it, there, it seemed like there was a proposal to move forward to get rid of the current structure of activity fee and, and to put it into a, um, I forget, it was an extra model, I think it was called, a flat fee for everyone. It sounded like that was going to be proposed, but I, I didn't. I kind of been looking through the minutes to see what happened to, to that idea. Um, I recall we did. I thought we did change it to um, a flat fee. You know. Well, uh, um, what we have the current fee is a hundred dollars for the first sport, seventy-five per second. There's some clubs. The conversation was to have a flat fee for every student in the high school. Oh, oh, as far as uh, right. charging every. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I think that was that was that was uh, the kibosh was thrown out by our, our legal. Okay. Uh, so. Sounded like there was a recommendation to do that coming out of the last extra group committee and nothing in there. No, that, I, don't, I don't think that was. Uh, we had discussed about it. I don't believe that was uh, able to move forward in that. Okay. And the other items we had talked about, you know, as far as activities using the electronic payment system, um, other costs that are involved other than the yeah, like, there's going to be a lot of conversation. There's still a lot of other costs potentially that, that, that students are bearing, and we'd like to get a handle on, on all of them. So I, I guess really the place to start is getting some reporting in place with you know, basically the current funding for, for each sport and, and uh, how we're doing informal placements on a regular cycle we're on, and getting a, a list of just basically starting with all approved athletic teams and uh, activities, just getting a list out there and get a number of participants. It's the trend and see where we are and where we were. And, uh, I believe another item that was on the list was as far as uh, we have passes for um, families that you can purchase. Uh, there was a thought that students could attend events for uh, reduced costs. And uh, I don't think that's moved forward either. Uh, there was conversation between three or a dollar to try to get more students to attend events. So something else we'd like to discuss. Isn't the family pass still available? I think there is. A 
Is that a mess though? Who did this as a student sketch? Got a 1080 event for a dollar. Oh, um, yeah, I, I think that's, uh, I know that there's, that they do it now, they do specials. Uh, um, uh, yeah, Mr. Knight, correct me if I'm wrong, but don't we, don't we do have like special dollar nights? We do, yes. Yeah. So we get a dollar now. It's ridiculous. Okay, and then some of the other topics that we have to, to hit as we move forward is looking at uh, coaching requirements, see if we can get some standard evaluations uh, of these head coaches, uh, to make sure that we're, we're being fair and consistent across you know, all of our coaching events, uh, making sure that scheduling is consistent both male and female, and, and different programs. Uh, another item that, that fell off the, the, the map, as far as I'm concerned, that the, the PAC had approached us about joining them, and uh, that kind of just stopped. I, I don't know if we ever finished the conversation as far as moving forward with the PAC. I, I think that's no, I think, you know, it was, it was brought up, and then um, I, I think um, when, uh, it, two things, I think, A, when there was the, possible discussion about football changing um, and I also think uh, you know un un unfortunately I think uh, sometimes when the, the, the board has a tendency to, to ask questions uh, or past superintendent and we push back a little bit we kind of think it's, we're kind of okay but then we just put a stop to it instead of <laughs> if I recall there was one or two sports that they didn't offer uh, yeah yeah, it's off the map and, and uh, I'll, I'll be honest, I think the way things stand right now with our administration, I don't know if that's uh, an item that there's any any extra hours to be uh, <laughs> pursuing that right now, uh, and I, I think we needed to, we needed to give them a, a, a direction the, the pack last spring. Uh, I think they they vote on it. Uh, it was a spring vote, right? So I think if we're about to apply, we have to apply in the springtime, uh, if I recall correctly. Um, it was so. um, Mr. Miller and. The, the committee kind of felt that um, there was there last year there was a lot of let's hurry up and present this and get it done you, you know uh, there was a lot of that and if, if there was some sort of if, if it was going to be brought up again I, I there, totally agree it should be it should be, it should be at a different speed that's it, 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 it it's something that probably should be having a, have a discussion now so that we can if we are going to make a decision um, you know uh, I, I you know, uh, I'll ask uh, uh, Mr. McKnight, would, would you have a conversation with Mr. Schmidt? Uh, uh, I, I think, you know, if we are going to pursue it, then we, but if, if, if you know, uh, if, you know, if you want to have a conversation with, with uh, Mrs. Rexroy and yourself and Mr. Schmidt, and, you know, if you guys feel we should go further, then, I, uh, then, then, you know, Mr. Miller's committee can certainly. I don't mind sharing, but we've had that conversation as a team, and it, not supported um, uh, unanimously. Not supported. There's some support, but not not large support. Uh, we did the five administrators in that meeting. Um, yeah, that's what so I recall Mr. Harris saying. Yeah. Uh, okay. so. I think what it ties into really needing to take a look and rebuild some of our, our feeder programs, especially the middle school. And I think that's one of the advantages that I've seen from the back. Yeah, I, I think there were there there were definitely pros and cons. Oh, um, you know, uh, unfortunately, we never got to that point where we. I was hoping we'd do maybe do some kind of community survey, but we never got to that point. So, so we went to try to address those in other ways as well, trying to rebuild our programs and recover facilities. I obviously, stadium turf are good. The next meeting is scheduled. We're, we're planning on having the next meeting on. You, you, you may you may want to reach out to Mr. Schmidt because uh, I know with the, with the sports schedule sometimes you do want him to be here. Yes. Uh, you, you might want to get some dates from him first. I don't know if you do that or not. Uh, I can reach out to him. All 
Alrighty. Uh, any other questions for Mr. Miller on uh, extracurricular? Okay. Uh, public comments. Okay. Old business. We addressed everything except for minutes. I do have one thing on a new business. I haven't gotten it yet, Mr. Mr. I do. We're old. We're still in old business. New business. Please <laughs> <laughs> first. Okay. Um, Unless you still like them. All right. So um, I don't, it, it actually reminded me um, of this when uh, Mr. Miller mentioned that uh, election day is in a couple of weeks. Um, Mr. Wolf had um, suggested a while back that we um, maybe want to um, stop being a precinct for um, uh, a, a polling place for Union Township Precinct 1. Precinct one, um, due to um, both safety concerns inside the building and safety concerns um, in the parking lot, um, and um, I thought we had agreed that maybe that was a good idea. Um, but the next, the next time for polling um, is primary season in May of this year of, of, of 2019. So if we want to um, get out of the business of being a polling place, we have to put in our paperwork. With the county pretty soon. I know we did. We get some pushback from Union Township. Yeah, we did get. Some okay, push, I, yeah. I I didn't know where it was. We did reach out to them and get some okay. pushback. Um, as a result, we've put extra security on duty for the day of the elections in the parking lot and the building itself. Um, we'll continue to try to lobby them in regards to. The All I want to say is, if you wanted it done by next cycle, it had to do happen soon. That's yeah, all. Yeah, who's paying for the extra security? Union Township yeah, doesn't exactly. decide. Right, we're a polling location. That's, we we, we agree to it, but we can also say no, thank you. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Ralph just gave it. Sounds like I know, you're really <laughs> Like to me, it's either we want well, to do it or we don't. Well, Township could offer I don't, the I don't know what the process is. Right. Once you agree to be a polling place, if, okay, if it's... Right. Well, I don't know if... I, I haven't looked, so I don't know what the responsibility of the polling place is to find a new poll. If it's if no, it falls I mean, with the county or if it falls with the, falls with the township. I don't, I'm, I'm telling you, I don't I'm know. just saying, like, the first question is, do we want to do it, right? And if right. we don't want to do it, then what, what, are, what are the steps to get out? Send a letter to the Berks County Board of Elections. Correct. Say we're out. We're 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 to be so don't right, call you in the I, I mean, I believe Mr. McKnight was pretty clear that he feels we should not be I, uh, and I, I, I felt the same. Yeah. I, I, think I know it's not. I know Other schools have gotten right? out of it because of security. Church. And yeah. that's, that, was, that was how it was presented to us. There's a church right around the corner. So what are other schools you should be doing too? They're all hired out in service days on days of elections too, so that the buildings can be used that we're on it. And that's another option that we can look at. The Immaculate Conceptions is right up there. Yeah. It's, that, but that's what I'm saying. If we want, if we want to get out of it, we need to send a letter to the Berks County Board of Elections sometime by, I'd say, February. I can check and see when it is. But well, we we could we could delegate that to Mr. Small. Yes. <laughs> he looks really happy about this. So. Mr. Wolf. A much more pleasant topic I thought we'd <laughs> discuss. Um, Ms. Hicks uh, sent us an email about the same trick or treat night, and I thought right. this would probably be a, a good time to talk about it. A group costume? Uh, you don't have oh. to wear a costume. You know. No, I'm not wearing a that costume, but I'll costume. hand out candy. Yeah, if, if we were going to do like a board table, and I, I don't know. Everybody donate some candy or something. I'm going to be traveling, so I can't make it. But I'd be so. happy to. Of course. You know, what was the date it's again, Miss? Miss. I'm sure so it's a you can't go. It's so you can do it. I have a board meeting. I got a board meeting. It's the Sorry. 25th of October, and if I have a partner trying to go with me, I'll get up. If nobody I'm else does that, we'll change Let's just plans. Let me let me come up with a dollar amount, and then someone buy the candy. Do we have to follow the, the, the <laughs> federal the federal food guidelines, Lonzo? Absolutely not. <laughs> you gotta do a full <laughs> bar. You gotta do a full <laughs> bar. Open bar. <laughs> full bar. <laughs> yeah. Vodka, gin, yeah. scotch. This is full size candy. I'm not gonna get pencils. No minis. No minis. No minis. You gotta do a full bar. So it sounds like we we want to participate. Yeah. So we just need to figure out the details. Okay. Thursday. Yeah, because I have. Is there a recommendation for how much candy each table needs to supply? We buy. 
we provide almost $3,000 worth of candy. Who? One table? No, DBA for the, for the whole event. We give candy to the high school kids to pass out. They don't bring okay. it up. Um, but then other organizations come in and bring theirs. Okay. We can supply you with some. No, we'll, but I would bring some. Fire. We've already got our, co our coordinated costume. Yes. She convinced me to wear a costume. So, but they'll get so they'll get to see that the school members don't actually have horns, right? Uh, Unless you wear them as part of your costume. Uh, <laughs> it's we should go as your favorite school board member if you think. There you go. That's going to be from the past. Okay. Yes, yeah, absolutely. The past is encouraged. Yes. No sense. That's what most of my class. <laughs> Who, who made a motion to adjourn? Me, get out. Dressler, second, Mrs. Olsen. Okay.